Extraordinary Phenomenon Investigations Council presents Epic Voyages. Come join us as we enter and experience the great mysteries of the world with tonight's host, Kevin Cook. Good evening. This is the Epic uh, Voyagers Radio Show. I'm glad to be on it. Uh, Ken Cherry has me on here guest hosting tonight. And uh, we've got a good guest and guests and John and Monica Miller. We're going to talk about the coming banking holiday. And we'll get into those issues in just a minute. But first, uh, I might have a few news pieces first. And it relates, I'm sure, to some of the topical matter we'll have tonight. Uh, I read an article uh, off the Newswire here. It says, Iceland got it right. And a Nobel Prize winning economist, Paul Krugman, uh, basically said, quote, what Iceland's recovery demonstrated is a case for letting creditors of private banks gone wild eat the losses, end quote. In other words, to say, uh, unlike the crooked uh, formats we do in this country, Iceland uh, let the people that deserve the losses get them and not foist them on the rest of the public. So we might deal with that and John and Monica in just a minute. But also, interestingly, this past week, uh, there was the Republican National Committee uh, meeting in Tampa at the co- convention. And, uh, well, <laughs> 5,000 demonstrators were supposed to show up, and only 250 did. And the police actually had them outnumbered uh, four to one. So that's one of the reasons why there was no ruckus to speak of. Uh, it was uh, a very interesting thing, to say the least. I don't know what happened to the protests in this country. At least people were getting involved, but I guess not in, not in Tampa. Uh, Apple rejected uh, a app that was kind of an edgy app. It was going to it was going to track drone strikes in Iraq, and uh, they uh, they rejected that uh, probably rightly so for objectionable content. But uh, that was kind of a different story. I thought you'd find interesting. And the, here's something that is really more striking. The New York Times admits every major news outlet is censored by the government. And I said every major news outlet. They have uh, basically these little checkpoints that you go through on quotes. And um, and it's obviously a sign that our, there's no such thing as a free and independent media. And uh, I was talking to the guest before the show just briefly. And, uh, you know, of course, Jesse Ventura was on uh, oh the end of June. And he still has not gotten a date when his third episode will be released on uh, True TV, even though he sold it to True TV and it's gotten paid for seven of the eight installments. Uh, And it was supposed to have been shown starting in January, and here it is, September, and they still haven't shown it. Obviously, there's some kind of fix going here where they're not showing something they've already paid millions of dollars for. But uh, this this little uh, news piece... uh, on the New York Times kind of uh, falls right in line with that. And uh, this show, of course, uh, is not censored, at least as I'm aware of. But, uh, you know, we're just a little fellows compared to CBS or the New York Times. But uh, all media is uh, basically controlled of any note. And I thought that you'd find that interesting. And on a lighter note, since I'm from the Northeast, I get a kick out of this. Uh, I actually picked this up from spiritdaily.com, the Catholic website I I uh, read periodically, 20% of the New Jersey voters have tattoos. And 40% of the New Jersey voters born after 1980 have tattoos. So whatever that says about New Jersey, I'll let you fill in the blanks. Uh, I'm a New Yorker anyway, so I can say what I want. (laughs) Anyway, for the next several shows, we have some very good topics, too. You know, I'm on my regular show, the Kevin Cook Show, tomorrow night on Tuesday. And a Robert McDonald is going to be there, and we're going to cover everything from sea monsters to Templar artifacts. Tuesday, uh, the 11th, we'll have a 911 show, and uh, Jim Selvage is going to be on the first half of the show, and we're going to replay some of Susan Lindauer's show we've done in the past uh, as the second half for a 911 special. 
And uh, Tuesday on the Kevin Cook Show, uh, on the 18th, Nick Redfern is going to discuss a book, Final Events, and uh, tell us why the U.S. government's interested in ancient artifacts and uh, ancient places. And finally, uh, as far as a preview, uh, Tuesday, the September 25th, I'm going to have an MD on who's going to talk about phony cancer drug shortage on the Kevin Cook Show. I'm sorry I, I can't say anything about Epic because uh, they didn't give me the info on their upcoming shows, but I'm sure they'll be pretty good, and I urge you to uh, listen to them. Uh, I need to go ahead and introduce John and Monica Miller. They're in a lovely place uh, in New Zealand, close to Auckland, and uh, how are you all doing down there? We're doing great. Thank you for having us on. Yeah, thanks for having us on. We appreciate it. Oh, I appreciate it, too. Uh, so we were discussing also before the show how lovely New Zealand is. I'd always heard it was. and well, we're, just, just, we're, we're just coming out of a very mild winter and going into a beautiful spring. So it's we dodged a bullet this, this year. The last two winters here, we're from Hawaii, so the two, oh. first two winters we were here, we thought, oh, my God, what are we doing here? But um, we're getting used to it. Well, uh, you know, I... Uh, I, of course, we haven't had much of it. We've had a rough summer here, not as bad as last year. I, I'm in Dallas-Fort Worth. Uh, Joe, we broadcast out of Chicago, but uh, I'm uh, mired here in Texas for the time being, but it's been rough. I guess uh, New Zealand's where they had that Lord of the Rings uh, shooting, that movie, wasn't it? That's right, because we have a, a range of uh, uh, Alps, not anything like Switzerland, but uh, glaciers and just majestic beauty. And uh, the landscape is, as you saw in the movie, it's it's so stark and so unlike anything else that it almost looks like a, a, a set in Hollywood. But uh, yeah. it actually is there. It's real. Well, yeah, that's, that's lovely. Uh, what uh, led you all to relocate to New Zealand? Well, one of the main reasons we came here is because we had um, a financial radio talk show in Hawaii, and we had uh, a, a rather big uh, financial group. It was uh, called the Investment, the Maui Investment Club. And the overwhelming question that we kept getting from our clients and from our listeners was, are the banks in America safe, and is my money really safe? And we started researching that question because we didn't feel like the banks were safe. So we looked at Panama, we looked at Singapore, um, uh, Canada, uh, Australia, New Zealand, and what we found was that Australia actually is the richest country on the planet with essentially almost no debt when you, you know, compare the strength of Australian banks to the, the strength of an American bank. And so we realized that the Americans would be so much safer if their money was in an Australian CD at uh, three and a half percent interest as opposed to, you know, point point one or something that you're getting in America. Right. Plus the banks are not going to go belly up like they're they're not in debt. They're they're very solvent and they have something in Australia, just like in America with the FDIC, that yeah. should yeah. a catastrophe occur, the banks uh are backed by the government and the bank the government would come in and bail out the bank should anything happen. Well at home in America, our FDIC is so limited that oh, yeah. maybe maybe the first you know few people that are in line would would actually get made whole, but most most of the people would not get their money out. So we wanted to find a way to um, help diversify our people, and we came here to check it out. We were absolutely blown away at how much more civilized it is here. The, there's like no crime. It, really? You know, it's like America was 50 years ago. It's it's still honest. It's so like a breath of fresh air that we just decided we're going to stay here. And uh, well, I don't know if that sounds too good to be true. That's really excellent. <laughs> well, I, I tell know. you, uh, a lot of our clients have, have come come over, have visited, have stayed with us, and uh, they have um, gotten their money out of harm's way because they can see what's coming in America. Well, you know, I can believe that. Also, I know from my own little personal readings that, uh, oh. I'm of Irish descent, which is no big deal, but I, I read a little bit about Ireland periodically, and there's a big, dis, there's still a, a latter day dis, emigration from Ireland to Australia because the economy is doing so well and uh, prosperous and what have you, and they can leave downtrodden Ireland and come to Australia like in previous years and uh, do well. And uh, I guess the uh, conservatism has led to a lot of uh, economic prosperity, really. Well, 
plus the fact that their mining sector is absolutely booming and they they're so uh wealthy because of the um all their minerals everybody wants the their minerals for uh their resources because there are countries on the planet that are still growing now granted yeah. china has slowed down somewhat but that that hasn't you know really hurt australia in any way well i guess there's such an insatiable demand for mer- minerals for various calls that, uh, that they'll be fine. <laughs> I, I know. Sure. I, I, re- I regret it several years ago not putting the money in an Australian CDs, some of the money I have. Uh, it just seemed, oh, I guess at the time, being an idiot, I didn't look into it enough. And, uh, oh, golly, well, uh, you know. It, 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 oh, no, I mean, you're I can still. Go ahead. I, you broke up a little bit. You're not alone in that it's very hard for people to do something that's radically new and different. Uh, yeah. The, the yeah. human being is a creature of habit. We we get into a, a routine and we get into a rut, and the thought of doing something so radical as open a, a offshore bank account, it's like, oh, no, that's just for rich people. Uh, right. But the truth of the matter is it's not. Anybody can do it. And, and well, you know, I, 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 Kevin, <clears throat> um, actually, we, we came over here about three years ago, and the uh, the Australian dollar was, I think, 0.51 as opposed to the American dollar. And we went to buy a car, and they said it was $10,000. And they said, oh, no, you got American money. It's only 5000 So had you bought that CD three years ago, let's say for $100,000, you your CD would now be 200000 because the, the, the actual dollar doubled, and you'd be getting 3.5%. But as we... I know. Well, everything's wrong about what I've done. I know <laughs> That's, that's, that's okay. You you did fine, and and now it's uh, hanging in at I think it's 1.03, yeah. and it's uh, it's it's safe. We're we're just concerned about the American economy and the American um, legal system. And that's why oh, we yeah. asked you: is is this a controversial <laughs> radio station? Because we've been on some of the biggest ones. We were on the big one in Cincinnati yesterday or two days ago, and then the big one in Los Angeles. And I think we shocked a few people, and of course, both of us can't talk at once, so I'm going to bring it back to Monica. She's the, she's the real good talker. <laughs> well, oh, this is nothing but a controversial <laughs> radio show here. We, we're actually quite big, too, believe it or not. Uh, we're uh, very, uh, very comparable to the Jeff Rents Network, uh, which is you know, pretty large. Uh, it's, however, the trouble is that uh, it seems... I'm sure you have run across these problems as well when you discuss, say, the situation prevailing in Australia. You, you tell people the truth, and it goes in one ear and out the other. It makes it very frustrating, I'm sure, as a financial analyst and consultant and also a radio host. I mean, I'm like, what's it take, buddy? I mean, what do you not understand about 4% versus half a percent? I mean, you know, this kind of thing. But uh, it, it makes it's frustrating sometimes. Well, it's true. It is very frustrating because... Um, people sometimes it's almost like they they have a, a a death wish that they they know things are bad but they are still frozen and not going to do anything about it and I right. sometimes wonder if it's because of all the fluoride in our water because it it does numb you down and dumb you down and it makes you just so so placid and and uh, unaggressive that you don't even have the gumption to get get yourself or your money out of harm's way it's like I know, like I know. You were hypnotized. I know, like the rabbit in the headlights or or the deer in the headlights or whatever the old saying goes. I know, I know. Well, that that's true, and it, but I mean, especially as a, you know, like the subject matter we'll be talking about tonight is, is of course very edgy, very true. I mean, obviously, you people have done your homework and are professionals in what you do, but uh, I guess and not just this category, but many. I come up with all these different stories, and you'd think I'd be uh, deluged with uh, phone calls all day the next day, but eh. uh, you know, I guess we, some Joe and I joke sometimes, what do we have to do? Have an alien actually uh, show up and uh, have dinner with us and have that taped on TV? I mean, what do we have to do? Yeah, but, uh, really. It, it, does, it makes you wonder, but what, what I found in my experience is that until someone is somehow personally affected or, or like a, a family member is personally affected by what's going on, they kind of don't want to know because if they admit it, then they feel like then all is lost. What can I possibly do? How can I fight the machine? But the truth right. is you can fight the machine. Do, do you all ever interview Gerald Salente? 
uh, Trends Journal forecaster? No, I've been meaning to get him as a guest. I just haven't uh, pursued it. Uh, okay. But I, uh, well, the thing uh, the thing I find interesting about Gerald, um, he he allowed us to to um, uh, use some of his material in our book very very graciously. He went to his bank. He called the bank in advance. He said, "Look, I I'm planning to buy some property, and uh, I want you to be aware that uh, tomorrow I'm going to come to the bank and I'm going to withdraw some money so I can, you know, put down a deposit." So right. yeah, fine, fine. He goes into the bank and he says, um, uh, so I, I'll be needing um, 200000 out of my account um, and I'd like that in cash. And uh, the teller calls the manager over. Now, he did warn them, but still. So the manager comes over and he says, I'll, I'll have to speak to you privately in my office. So he goes into the office and the manager says to him, uh, so what are you going to do with the money? And <laughs> Gerald is quite taken back by that because it's like, excuse me, this is my money. So he says, well, it's none of your business. You know, in that New York accent of his, I love it. So he yeah. says, he, so he says, well, you're not being very cooperative. I'm just asking you, what are you going to do with the money? Why do you need that money? So Gerald used a, a profanity this time, saying it's none of your <clears throat> business. Right. And uh, so now the guy's really irritated with him. So he says, so he slaps the for- FBI form in front of him, and he says. Uh, All large deposits, because it was 200,000, all large deposits uh, have to be reported to the FBI and you have to fill out this questionnaire. And he could not get his money unless he filled out the FBI questionnaire. And the bank manager continued to try to harass him, but he did finally get his money. But I'm, I'm just suggesting that if half of your listening audience, just half, went to the bank tomorrow and said, I'd like to close my account, and I'd like to have that money in cash, please. I will tell you right now, they probably would not get it because they loaned that money of yours out 30 times over, and they don't have it to give it back to you. (laughs) So if the average average person understood that, if you knew that your money is really not yours, they are playing with it, they're doing whatever they want to do with it. If they lose it, tough luck, You're, you're just basically out of luck. And um, wouldn't that be an amazing way to kill the machine, to kill the monster? If you don't feed your money to the banks, then how can they control us? Just take your money out, you know, even if you put it in gold or silver. One of the things that, you know, has always uh, irked me is, of course, the financial crisis that started really occurring, well, for a long time, but especially from 2008 with the derivative issue and how those were nothing but... uh, there's nothing but st- stock fraud. I mean, it, I mean, these derivatives were based on nothing, uh, meaning worthless mortgages, and uh, it was nothing but stock fraud. And if I had done it or somebody of a history in nature had done it, they'd be in prison for 50 years, and none of these people have gone to jail over this in the U.S. Yeah, you know, well, we actually picked that up many, many years ago. Um, what is the name of that gal? Uh, the, the woman. Anyway, there was um, Catherine Austin. Fitz. Catherine Aust- Austin Fitz, exactly. Yeah. Uh, she uh, she said that essentially what they were doing, what these banksters were doing, was uh, was taking a mortgage certificate and uh, let's say a four hundred thousand dollar mortgage, and they would xerox them, they would copy them, and they had like three bags in front of them, one billion dollars each, and they just throw these xerox copies, one in each bag. So that really, the, each bag was supposed to be a billion dollars, and they'd be sold by Merrill Lynch or, or whatever. And when they, and nobody ever opened up the bags for about three or four years, and then finally, uh, Lehman Brothers, which is my old firm, they went under. So that, so they somebody had to open up the bags to find out what was in them. Sounds like uh, Nancy Pelosi, <laughs> but anyway, pass the bill so, so we can see what's in it. So they actually opened up the bag, and instead of a billion dollars in there, there was only a half a billion, and it was you know, that half a billion was worthless. So really, you hit it on the on the head, Kevin. There was so much fraud, and I've been oh, on yeah. Wall Street. We're, we're we're sort of semi. I am semi retired at this point. I want to retire, but New Zealand said we still have to work. That's why we wrote the book, oh, and that's why we're still working. Oh, they did say you still had to work if you were going to be there? Well, because if you're over 55 and you come to New Zealand, you cannot take a job away from a younger uh, person who who is is a natural-born Kiwi here. So you must either purchase a company and hire Kiwis or you start your own company and you hire Kiwis. So 
You mean they actually care about their they actually care about their inhabitants and and isn't that something? It's it's such a radical idea. Holy mackerel! <laughs> wow, I, uh, that that sounds just. Uh, we better not let that out. That's a greater uh, yeah, revelation. Than anything else? <laughs> well, um, but uh, I, just just to back up to what uh, you guys were just talking about, um, in in my uncensored magazine, I just read the most fascinating article that talked about why they had to do what they did, the bankers, why they had to have this QE uh, where they, in 2008, they announced that um, uh, if, if we do not get this bank bailout, there will be martial law. Well, the truth of the matter is we've been under a sort of quiet martial law since 2008 anyway. It's just that the average sheeple doesn't, doesn't wake up and doesn't get it yet. But the right. reason that they needed those bailouts was because they sold so many of those bad derivatives to China. And when China realized that they got taken for a ride, they were furious. So they demanded the money to either be returned to them or they wanted our real estate. So, so, so the Fed and the government freaked out. They didn't want to give up. And they did give up some of the real estate, but they didn't want to just have the Chinese come and invade us. So they started paying back that loan, paying down the loan. But where would they get the money? So they had to do these, these uh, uh, bailouts. So because of that, China, Russia, um, uh, Iran, and I forget what the third country is, but they've all started dealing with one another in gold, and they're not accepting U.S. dollars. Venezuela? Possibly Venezuela. Might have been. I think it is. But uh, so, so it's like the behind the scenes of why are they doing all these bailouts and where's all that money going? Most of it's yeah. going to China. I didn't know that. Well, you know, the, what's so bizarre is, uh, of course, I'm not sure exactly how the machinations of all this came about, but I remember way back in the late 80s was the first time I ever went to a Walmart. But when I did uh, for the first time, there was a big banner up there that was to the extent of uh, – 97% of our merchandise is made in America, blah, blah, blah. And now it's almost universally made in China. Yes. And uh, yes. I just, how did they transition to that? I wonder. I, I, it's just amazing. Well, if, like in America, if you move every factory over to China, then everything that comes back to us is going to be made in China. Yeah. yeah. You know? but it's I mean, amazing I, how that all transpired in a 20-year span. It's like our whole economy uh, revolved uh, to... Uh, being nothing. <laughs> as far and, as and you, you remember, they, they made it sound so good. They said globalization, oh, you know, yeah. fair trade. They made it sound so glamorous. And meanwhile, people are losing their jobs. People are, are, are downsizing to, to lesser positions. And, and all of a sudden, now, jobs are difficult to come by. Oh, exactly. Fact, well, that's exactly right. What is the statistic now? Because the, the, the true unemployment figure... Uh, is never revealed to us. No. So I wonder what the true figure is. Probably uh, 25 percent. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, it's a, if you listen to John Williams from uh, from Chow's stats, I believe it's about 17.3 percent, which is actually uh, similar to the 1930s. So we're right. in pretty bad right. shape. Oh yeah, I, I know. I've I've heard that. Uh, I, I'm fortunate I, to be in my own business, yeah. but I. I would hate to look for a job. Yeah, well, we we also would hate to look for a job. <laughs> oh man, we we'd be kicked out of here so fast. I mean, it is such a wonderful country. The people are so sweet. But let me give you some information about the number of people. There's only 4.3 million people. Oh. They're wonderful, nice, many many Chinese. They're all different nationalities, but we have 38 million sheep. 38 million sheep and only 4 million people. And here's why you better stay in America. Put your money over here to stay in America. Gas is $8.62 a gallon. So yeah, but how big is the country, though? Oh, it's it's a, small. Well, it's, no, it's, it's pretty big if you put both islands together. Explain the islands. Um, well, obviously, you, you know your geography. Uh, New Zealand is, is a North Island and a South Island, and um, a lot of people from our area in Auckland like to go 